Psalms 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. All right, so deliverance and healing comes from the Lord, ultimately. All right, I know that we have our, uh, what, what's he saying? What's, what's he saying? All right. That he'll be here shortly. Gad, that is, that he'll be here shortly. But healing ultimately and deliverance comes from the Lord. Now, of course, we have our uh, doctors and things like that. So, where does that come into play? Right? We have our medicines that we take. Is that biblical? Does that, where, where, where does that come from? Right? Is the book of Ecclesiasticus an impact from? AKA uh, the book of, of Jesus, the son of Sirach. All right. So this is uh, 38, chapter 38 in the book of Sirach, verse 1. It says, Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which ye may have of him, for the Lord hath created him. Is that right there? So God created doctors. Um, I'm going to jump down to verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. And he that is wise will not afford them. All right. So if you look at a lot of these different medicines, even if they had been concocted with synthetic things, and I would say stray, uh, uh, not necessarily stay, but stray from the more synthetic medicines. But anyway, uh, even the ones that are synthetic, they have a little bit of an element that comes from nature. All right. Because those are actually the healing properties. The synthetic things are just, you know, um, either there to get you high. Or that they're there to create a chemical hook that makes it addictive. So, some the uh, the what what effects all that comes from the synthetic part of these medicines. But it says verse four: the Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not afford them. All right. Uh, verse no verse yeah verse five: was not the water made sweet with wood that the virtue thereof might be known? Right. So that is going into when we were in the wilderness when the Israelites had just come out of Egypt. We were in the wilderness. And the people were complaining about not, or uh, just having just water and not having anything to drink besides water. And the people also complained about the manna, the angel's food, when they said, oh, we just have bread and we don't have anything to go with it, right? So, so God took a tree and he put it in the water and he made it sweet. So uh, Sirach is using this metaphor to, to show, show that God has concoctions in nature for whatever use that he wants. All right. Uh, verse six, and he had given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works. Right. So the medicines were created for you to use them, be healed, and then praise God. All right. So and and then people these days would be like, well, uh, God didn't heal me; it was the doctors. You're a fool. You're a fool. You don't understand how things work. All right. Um, verse seven, with such doth he heal men and take away their pains, all right? Of such doth the apothecary make a confession, right? So that's, the apothecary was the original pharmacist, all right? And of his works, there is no end. And from his and from him is peace over all the earth. You see that right there? So uh, from the, the roots of pharmacology was something good, but they introduced the, the quite literal Greek pharmakia, which is witchcraft. So a lot of a lot of the uh, pharmacies. That's uh, uh, again that goes into what is natural versus what is synthetic. I mean they they mix the two, and I would say lean more towards the natural stuff, the stuff that is completely based on nature, like aspirin. Aspirin, for example, they put some synthetic into it, but it's based off uh, a particular wood from a tree, and I, I I forget which tree, but uh, it's something something to look into. Um, it says. Says right here, verse nine. My son, in thy sickness, be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and He will make thee whole. So again, healing comes from God. All right. So I'm gonna uh, uh, keep reading. It says, Leave off from sin, and order thy hands aright, and cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. So ultimately, that's the only way to truly be healed is to cleanse yourself from your sin. All right. Verse eleven. Give a sweet savor and a memorial of fine flour and make a fat offering as not being. All right. So uh, this was technically Old Testament. Um, I mean, literally, it's in the 
apocrypha, but Old Testament as in before Christ. So that's why he said give a sweet savor, uh, memorial fire, flower. He's talking about a sacrifice. But we know that, that in the New Testament, we're supposed to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, which he also mentioned when he said leave off from sin. So now we just have, have that first part where it said leave off from sin. Uh, verse 12, then give place to the physician for the Lord hath created him. Let him not go from thee, for thou hast need of him. You see that right there? So the medicines and the, the doctors are a good thing, all right? But he said, this is, the, this is the order. Leave off from sin, you know, give your offering, which is our bodies, and uh, and then go to the doctor. So we know that's, that's, the, that's the order. Place God at the top and doctors under God, but still utilize the doctors, all right? As uh, using the world, not abusing, as another scripture says. All right. Uh, verse 13 is still talking about doctors. There is a time when in their hands there is good success. He says there's a time when they're, they're needed. All right. And it would be good for you. Verse 14. For they shall also pray unto the Lord that he would prosper that which they give for ease and remedy to prolong life. Right. So uh, it's talking about genuine and sincere doctors, not doctors that are just trying to make money. Right? And righteous doctors. Verse uh, verse 15, he that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. So again, these diseases and things like that come from sin. And from that, what we're supposed to do as followers of Christ, we're supposed to leave off from that sin uh, and then and get medicine. Then go to the doctor. All right. So um, from there. There is there's another in uh, in wisdom of Solomon. I forget where it's at though, about how uh, the word healed them. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm uh, still thinking of that song. So I thought I thought I read that today. Um we might get that at a, at a different time. It's really easy to find scriptures that uh, where Christ healed people. <laughs> we can definitely get some of that. Um. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, uh, I like Luke because Luke himself was a physician, and he he's given uh that perspective on things. Um. That's not what I'm looking for. Let's see. What am I looking for? Okay. Okay. Getting into loop. Let's see. All this, all this is, all this is good stuff. But <laughs> again, I'm just looking into uh, some some good stuff right here. But this this is one this is one sickness that a, a woman had. It's not even more of a, a sick. It's not even sickness. More of a deformity. Uh, the that Christ had healed, and then from there we'll get we'll get something else. But verse uh, verse ten and Luke chapter thirteen, it says, uh, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. That's what Christ used to do. He used to teach in synagogues on the Sabbath, and at other times, whenever he was done in that city, he would go to a different city and do the same, and even street teach at times. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years. And was bowed together, and he could in no wise lift up herself. Right. So this is going into like a hunchback, right? somebody who is, is a, um, you know, their their spine is is deformed. Uh, verse twelve. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. All right. 
Uh, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work and them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Right? So that is that one, uh, and it's not even that one Pharisee. There were plenty of Pharisees who had that same mentality and that interpretation of uh, you know, the laws of the Sabbath. But there's nowhere in, in the scriptures that say you can't heal people on the Sabbath day. It just does not exist. Um, but of course, that's how the Pharisees took it, or took it rather. That's how they uh, interpreted it. And that's why they were so mad at Christ. And ultimately, because they ended it, not because of what he did. But anyway, verse 15. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to water it? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Right? So that was the custom. He would heal people on the Sabbath day. And this is just another example. But uh, he, he equated it to um, you know, animals receiving water on the Sabbath day, right? Because those are things necessary to live. Um, so he said, look, the healing is the same as drinking water, right? This is what people need to live. That's what I'm doing for them. All right. Uh, from there in another place in Matthew 17. Now this is something, uh, this is something completely different, uh, more similar to a deformity instead of a sickness, but still similar versus, uh, this is, yeah, this is Matthew 17, starting with verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic, right? So this is mentally ill and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. So this mental sickness, Christ was able to heal that as well. Verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast them out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out by prayer and fasting. So there's some things that uh, that plague us, whether it be like this this situation, a mental illness. Um, but sometimes you just gotta pray and fast, and that that'll that'll help your body reset, and it'll get rid of whatever, uh, and God will get rid of whatever sickness or infirmity. Or demon that you happen to be dealing with. So, so those those are good for healing. Those are good for healing. I um, also want to get something into Tobit because Tobit sa says this, and I think this is something that not only me personally can, can focus more on, but people in general can focus more on. Uh, is it? Is it? No. No, I think it's actually a well. Chapter 12. Yes, because we just read about prayer and fasting, how sometimes they only come out with prayer and fasting. So, 12, Tobit 12 and verse 8. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. So, those four all go together. And you can look at it as two doubles, right? Prayer is good with fasting and alms homes are good with righteousness all right uh but all four you need all four really so prayer and fasting alms and righteousness it says a little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness all right now would uh, uh be remiss if i didn't explain or show what righteousness is all right luke 1 and verse 6 it says and they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. Blameless. All right, so righteous and blameless are synonyms. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances. That's what. It, that's what it means. I, I see you, Gad. I'll bring you on.
Hey, Shalom, bro. I'm going to sign across the blitz. <laughs> Do what? I said, how you doing? I'm making it, bro. You know how it is. Yeah. It's like uh, pulling me. I'm just hanging on, trying to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you on that, man. Uh, which is ironic because I got like an ear infection. So. Dang. I have for the past few days now. I just started, bro. You're going huh? robot. What? I said you went robot on me. Okay. okay. Well, no, I was just saying that I got an ear infection half for the past few days. And so I was going into a few uh, scriptures on like sickness and healing from the Lord, things like that. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I had, I had just read Matthew 17, uh, going into how some things you can only pray and fast away, and that that specific incident he was talking about a mental illness because the son because that man's son was lunatic. But um, you know, for for different people, it's different things. Regardless, some things you can only get uh, away from me by praying and fast. Right. I mean, like uh, also like certain spirits, like habits. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, so from there, I went to, uh, Tobit 12 and 8, and that's where I'm at now. Tobit 12 and 8? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of on topic. It's not on topic of sickness, but it is on prayer and fasting. Um, right. and I, I just, I just think we should touch on this scripture a little bit more often than we do, because it is that important. What, Tobit 12 and 8? Hang on one second. Yeah. All right, Tobit 12 and 8. <clears throat> All right, prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is Better to give alms than to lay up gold. Yeah, and I just uh, showed in Luke 1 and 6, righteousness means to keep all the commandments. Um, so prayer is good with fasting, and alms, alms is either deeds that help people or money that helps people. It's, just, it's the same thing, though, but it's free will offering is what the Old Testament called it. Um, that's what alms are, helping people willingly and freely. and even the commandments go hand in hand the same way that prayer and fasting go hand in, go hand in hand. But you need all four, really. Right, exactly. You need all four of these. Prayer, yeah. fast, alms, and righteousness. Because, like, bro, like we was talking about, it's all righteous tallies. At the end of the day, your wicked acts, righteous acts, you do more of this or this. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's 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 not even uh it's not even that if we have Christ, then Christ is willing to overlook our our wickedness. Oh, but yeah. you you got to uh you got to know him. You got right. to know him. Like, yeah, you have to go to a, yeah. a process to get to know Christ on a level to where He will forget your past sins. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and like I said, you got you got to know Christ. You want to give me that in, in First John two. In First First John two. Yeah, First John oh, two, yeah. and verse three. three. Right. So you have to know Christ for Him to overlook your your wickedness. You have you have to know Christ as the Scripture has said. All right, as the Scripture has said. You said verse what? Uh, first. First John, uh, two and three, right. over three. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. You see that right there. So the only way you know Christ, the only way you know God, is if you keep His commandments. Read. He that saith, "I know Him," and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. You see that right there. So you you can't say you. Know know God, I have a personal relationship with God and or Christ, but you don't keep the commandments. That's, that's, not, how, that's not how that works. They're going to tell you or rather Christ is going to tell you when he shows up, he's going to say, I never knew you. And it, even that, 
that, of course, is just symbolic of him not delivering you and you dying in that lake of fire. Exactly. Uh, he, he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. As a matter of fact, give me that in Matthew. All right. Are we coming back here? No. All right. Matthew 7. 7, yeah. <clears throat> All right, the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Do what now? Start at verse 21. All right. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, and verse 21. All right, 16. All right, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. All right. So, first of all, because some people will say you just need to call on the name of Jesus and you'll be saved. But also you have BHIs that say, well, no, you got to say Yahweh Shah. You got to say uh, Yahshua or Yahushua, you know. Um, but not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, going to get into the kingdom. You have to do the will of God. So hold that and give me the will of God. What, uh, what is that precept? I was going to ask you that. <laughs> Psalms 40 and verse 8. All right, bet. That's what I thought it was. I wouldn't pause. I get that. Like, I need the, the, the righteousness precept in Psalms as well. Before we get off here. All right, the book of Psalms. Chapter 40 and verse 8. All right. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. Right. So the will of God, the will of the Father which is in heaven, is his commandments that he give us by the hand of Moses. Right. And a lot of people hate the Old Testament, but it is what it is. That's where the law is. That's where right. thy neighbor and thyself is. That's where... Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind is. That's where all the law and the prophets are. Like all the exactly. But anyway, go back to uh, go back to Matthew seven. All right, hang on one second. All right, so pick back up verse twenty-one. All right, Matthew seven and twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So believing on Jesus' name and, and calling out to Jesus is not enough to get to heaven. You have to do the commandments of God to get to heaven. All right. Read. All right. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name? Name have cast out devils, and in thy <clears throat> excuse me, in thy name done many wonderful right, works. So pe people are thinking that Christ is with them because they've done great things, right? They've been successful in life. They pray all the time. They think they're they're getting into the kingdom. They think they know God. Right. Well, like some people who uh, you know know that church is a scam, but aren't willing to put the true work into living the truth you know what I mean? yeah they think that well they know that going to the church is wrong okay then they they just pray and live their life and never do anything that the bible says to do never read they say oh i got my own personal relationship with god right. the god of your mind does not exist no Absolutely it's yourself not. that you're talking to right unless you do the will of god which is his laws you do not know god your own right. personal relationship is something that you fabricated in your mind. All right. So uh, I'll keep reading. Uh, all right. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Right. So, so Christ said, look, and then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work iniquity. ye that work iniquity. Christ is not going to say, get out of here, scram. That's not, no, he's going to kill you. That's what he's saying. 
He's going to kill you for your sins. That's what he's saying. He's going to judge you righteously according to what you've done. Exactly, bro. And that, at that time, when he said, depart from me, guess what? That's in a time where that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the earth is Christ. That means if you got to depart from Christ, you got to get off the earth. Exactly. But he ain't talking about shooting people off into space. He's talking about putting people in that lake of fire. Right. I know. I'm just saying if you just if you just break it down like that logically yeah you ain't got no choice but to you know be dead yeah uh let, let's go to a scripture that say the same thing give me isaiah 66 because this is talking about christ's return as well before christ is even born right to to uh, to marry the, the the wife of joseph this, this was prophecy about his return in isaiah 66 earlier in the book of isaiah he was prophesying of his birth now he's talking about the, the last days, his return. Right. Isaiah 66 and start with verse uh, 15. All right. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66. You said start with verse what? 15. 15. All right. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Right. For so the Lord, Jesus Christ, is coming back with fire, with that nuclear fire. That's when he's going to come back is when those nukes start popping off. That, that's the time to strike, all right? And with his chariots like a whirlwind, you're starting to see them chariots now. The, right. the, you have people Already. that government bringing it before Congress talking about, look, the Air Force needs to bring out all the information that they have on these quote-unquote UAPs because they know that the Air Force has been hiding the information. On these exactly. of the angels, right? Yeah, a lot just the Air Force, bro. It's across the board, the intelligence agencies mm -hmm. and uh, like mm -hmm. subdivisions of the military have been gathering all this information, bro, for probably the last hundred years. To be honest, yeah. Since um, from what I hear, they really started exploding as far as sites, uh, or rather, uh, sighting. Take it, whoa. Yeah, after the second world, after the second world war, right? After the first nukes were dropped, right? Exactly. Um, but when we, what? Yeah, keep reading on that. We, we began waking up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like man, Hannah just read tonight Revelation 11, mm -hmm. whereas the two witnesses shall lay, uh, you know, shall be trampled in the street 42 months. Well, yep. I'm that cloth. And you know it says four months, then twelve sixty days, then three Grand days and a half, years. and you know, yeah, exactly. But uh, that goes right along with that right there. What you're saying, but keep reading Isaiah sixty six. Yeah. All right, verse sixteen. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Right. So when when, it's, when Christ said, look, he's going to plead with you to depart from him, he's not talking about, uh, get out of here. <laughs> he's talking about yeah. he's going to kill you. The slain of the Lord shall be many. Right, exactly. All right. And and he's about to be specific. He's about to get into who, who he's going to kill. Keep reading. Right. Uh, all right. 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Right. So I said, those that sanctify themselves and purify and pray over pork and the abomination would be like lobster and shrimp, crawdads, all, right. all the unclean foods. Those that pork right try to pray over the unclean foods. Catfish is an abomination. God said they shall be consumed together, meaning they're all going to die together on that right. day. Right. It's all going to be burnt up at once. What would you say? I said it's all going to be burnt up at once. That's right. They shall be consumed together. Uh, keep right. reading. All right. For I know their works and their thoughts, 
it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. So that, in that day, everybody's going to see Christ. Everybody. There's, there's not going to be any disputing. It, it, it's, it's not going to be a situation where people's going to have to come and tell you, hey, look, Jesus, he came and he's in, he's in the Middle East. Let's right. go see. Him. No. It's going to be everybody seeing him come down from the sky, and everyone right. is marveling at the at the uh, at the strangeness of his salvation that he's bringing for his people. Right, not just the strange, just just the of the you know reality of the situation setting in, especially with the other nations. Like, bro, just think about it. Like, um, with George R. R. Martin and Game of Thrones, like the during the time of the story, they lived so long they forgot the main threat you know they, they think it's just a, a old fairy tale right about the walkers and the, the army of the dead yeah. nice. like, just think about that oh a full blood ghetto black man coming down here to save all the poor and downtrodden people of israel as we know but the other people just see as you know the colors or whatever you know whatever derogatory by word they want to throw as but you know just that all at once you're talking about amazement and then terror you know eventually after the thoughts circle you're gonna get the terror and then like we read uh, a couple of days ago where they will be hiding in the mountains and uh, and like Revelation eight or nine, they'll be hiding in the mountains and in pits, and they'll beg them to like collapse on them to keep them from uh, fear, seeing the lamb yeah. coming in wrath. Right. right. Yeah. I, I I use the word strangeness because that's what that's uh I'm referencing wisdom of Solomon five. But but yeah, man, uh, who uh, right, who right. they have hated. This whole time, Christ is coming back to save those that have been hated, those who have been despised, the uh, so-called Blacks, Latinos, American Indians, South Asians, some Africans, and some from all around the world. Right. But the people that have think about it, bro. despised and hated and oppressed, that's the people he's coming to save. Exactly. But yeah, keep reading. All right. And I will set a sign among them. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, that draw the bow to Tabal and y uh, Yavon, to the isles of far off, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Exactly. So God said that he sent his people to all, all different lands. All right. Tarshish would be like Spain, Pool, and Lud. You start getting into uh pool being titlath Pileser in Assyria and Lud being the Lydians in Turkey said that draw the bow to Tubal and Javan those are like Mediterranean Isles but then he says to the Isles of far off that would be your Pacific Islanders all right that have not heard my fame not have seen my glory and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles right because those right. people never uh Christ never went to those lands Christ never went to the Pacific Islands all right not in his lifetime so we have to be the ones to go to these places and teach these people about the word of God, the true word of God, all right? About how Christ is a black man with white woolly hair who come to save his people, right. the 12 tribes scattered abroad, right. from the hand of their enemies and from the hand of all that hate them, all right? If we keep God's commandments. That's right. what the people need to hear. They need to hear the word of God uncensored, like they've never heard it before. The sincere. Sincere milk. That's it. The sincere milk of the... All right, so keep reading. All right. Verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses and in chariots, and in litters, and upon mules, and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Right. So on Judgment Day, there are going to be uh, millions and billions of people who die, and there's going to be an innumerable multitude also of people who are delivered because they had been keeping the commandments of God. But then you're going to have people left who uh, don't die, 
who didn't die in that day, and some of them's going to be Israelites, and they might not even know that they're Israelites. So these other nations who want to serve the Lord will bring the Israelites as an offering and say, here, here, God, here's your people. We want to serve you, and we're going to do that by bringing your people to you. All right, please don't kill us. Have mercy on us. We're trying to be, we're trying to extend an olive branch so that you don't judge us the way you've judged the rest of the world. Exactly. So we're trying to appease yes. you. Verse 21. All right. Verse 21. I will, I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith right. the Lord. Those Israelites that were brought from the other nations, God will turn them into priests. All right. Verse 22. All right. For as the new heavens and the new earth will I make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Right. So he ain't talking about literally destroying the sky and uh, literally getting rid of the ground. He's talking about making a new work, essentially. That's what he's talking about. Making the earth into a righteous world, putting new people in rulership, uh, his people in the rulership, righteous people in rulership with Christ as the king, obviously, and it's going to be right. a completely different planet. Yep. All right. Ruled First under righteousness. Force and love. Do what? Did you hear me? I said ruled under righteousness, enforcing the law across all lands. That's right. It, it will be a new world where the laws right. of God are the law of the earth. That is the law, right? Yes, exactly. Um, so shall your seed and your name remain, right? The name of Israel, right? right? And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Right. So it will come to pass in that day that everyone does the will of God. Everyone keeps God's feast days. It ain't gonna be no more Christmas. It ain't gonna no, be no more more of birthdays, no more okay. Halloween, all oh, right, great. Thanksgiving, no more Easter, all right. It's going to be a no more Sunday. We won't even be calling it Thanks. Sunday, all right, because right. we don't worship the sun. Right. Exactly. We'll and it was named after to worship the sun. Yes. So we, we will be worshiping on the Sabbath from one Sabbath to another, which is the seventh day, not the first. And right. Every new moon. Well, we just come out of the new moon last night. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. At dark. And slid right into that's the Sabbath. That's right. So praise the Lord for that thing. From one new moon to another. From one new Sabbath to another. Right. Except it's going to be all flesh worshiping God in that day. Right. If you're living. Yeah, keep reading. All right. And they shall go forth. And look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed yep. against me. Part from me, you workers of iniquity. Exactly. That's what he's saying here. Those who, that, those who he tells depart from me, that's where you're going. The carcasses. You're going in the pile of carcasses. Read. All right. For their worm shall not die, neither shall the fi their fire be quenched, and they shall be and abhorring unto all flesh. Right, that is that lake of fire that is currently Babylon the Great. It will become that lake of fire where everyone who transgressed against the Lord will go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where all, all the carcasses of the men that transgressed against God coming right here to the lake of fire. <coughs> it will be a great, great and terrible day of judgment. All right? Right. So um, the point why we went here, we kind of went off on a tangent, but um, it was Christ saying, depart from me, you works of iniquity. All right. So let's go back to Tobit 12 and 8. All right. Yeah, I like this Tobit 12 and 8. We need to touch on this a little bit more often. Yeah. Bring it out, you know. Yeah. If not less than every other lesson, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. primarily because it's something that I need to to work on is my prayer, fasting, alms, and righteousness. Same as we all do. Do for sure. Uh, like I've uh, I've got to start making uh, fasting a uh, regular routine. You know.
Oh, absolutely. Um, but I will say this because it, it did get to this point at one at one point in time with me. Once it becomes a regular routine, it's not afflicting your soul anymore. So if you're going right. to, you always got to keep like up in the stakes. You know what I mean? Because right. yeah. what so you don't want to do stuff like, so stuff like that. I don't realize. You know, it's a blessing. Even though when I'm thinking in my mind, you know, it's it's a, a, a mess up on my part. But I, I ain't thought of it from that perspective or, you know, certain perspectives, you know. Um, well, yeah, what are you talking about? How uh, fasting gets easier the more you do it? Or not just the more you do it, but like, uh, uh, you know, anything you just get in the habit of doing, mm -hmm. it, it ends up losing its meaning if it just becomes part of your routine, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll only speak to that from, from experience. Right. But uh, right. yeah, one thing that you one thing that you don't want is uh, fasting to not afflict your soul because the whole point of it right. is to afflict your right. soul so that you you right. call upon the Lord. Right. You know, it's supposed to be a challenge. Yeah. Yes, it's supposed to be a challenge. So uh, so yeah, that's why you see that's why you see the uh, the men of God in the scriptures they'd be fasting for like you know days and even like right. you know and, and in the case of Ezra he was fasting for like weeks at a time. You know. Right. He was having to, to to deal with the angel, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. The angel taught him, hey, look, fast for a week. I'll, I'll come back and meet you right here. And then he would fast for that week, and then the angel would come and meet him. He said, okay, fast for another week. I'll come back and meet you again next week. And right. so that's like two weeks he's fasting. And then after that, the angel tells him, okay, stay here, but only eat, like, the herbs that you find in this field. And, you know you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's, that was a – But, bro, think about what that was. Think about what that was right in that moment. What do you mean? I'm like that the the angel telling him that, like what was that for Ezra? Well, well, that was like uh, you know, instruction. Yeah, I know, but that was to see how bad he wanted it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it was a test for sure. Yeah, and he passed it. It wasn't bro, you just uh like up on me. Yeah, I said it was a test right. for sure, and, and like, he passed it. Like he was testing him, like okay, so if you can do this. And he, you must really want to know bringing you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This is is certainly a lot of good stuff in Ezra, right. and maybe something to touch on uh, next week. But uh, there's a part of Ezra in Ezra eight, I believe, where it talks about adding uh, culture to to understanding, and you know, right, right. That's something to get to at, at another point. But basically, explaining how God's culture, you know, his his dress code, his dietary law, his feast days, they stem from that, you know, love of God and love of the brethren. And once you do those things, you will want to implement the culture that, that God has ordained. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what I've been meditating on here recently, just because I've, I've been speaking with uh, brothers who, with a Christian Christianity mindset, say, well, I don't have to keep all the laws because, you know, I, I love God, I love my brothers. Well, if you really had that understanding, if you had understanding, right. you add to that culture. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And like it, it's also like a, it's it's healing. Like the Bible says, it's medicine. Like where you're listening right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, read the, read this here in Tobit twelve and eight. All right, in the Book of Tobit, chapter twelve and verse eight. Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little. With Righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to, to give alms than to lay up gold. Right. So yeah, we, we spoke of how uh, one form of alms is money. That's probably the most the easiest form of giving is giving money. Uh, just because people can take that money and do whatever they need to do with it. Whereas if you give like clothes, they can only really do one thing with those clothes. Um, but it says it's better to give alms than to lay up gold because that's what you think about whenever you think of making money you think of oh i'm i'm gonna save it or you know or, or spend it some most people will be like spend it but even if you're thinking i'm gonna do the right thing with it you're thinking i'm gonna save it well god said no don't don't just hoard it right, Get people that <clears throat> right. because also like once you take on that mentality you're thinking based off what bro is it the world not just the world but uh is it the good of the collective or is it selfish oh it's selfish for sure absolutely that's why yeah 
that's that's the world that we live in, though. It's it's a selfish world. Capitalism uh, promotes selfishness and greed. Man, right, lovers of themselves. Yeah, and More what's the main thing around hollering, bro? I learned how to love myself. I learned how to love myself. Yeah, I will. Like I will say loving your I will say loving yourself is important because it, you gotta love your neighbor as you love yourself. Um, but right. you know there at there comes that loving your neighbor. Right. Yeah, that's even first in the love your Thank neighbor you. as you love yourself. love yourself. Exactly. But but that's a that's two different things, especially the way that they mean it. Where they say love yourself, that's saying accept yourself. Even if, even if you no. then. Oh, go ahead. Now I'm saying say your your more time. Yeah, our connection is terrible because they keep doing that from uh with you on my end. But uh, what you call it? Uh, what was I saying? What were we just talking about? Love. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the way that they mean it, love yourself. Like uh, I learned how to love myself. They're saying they're accepting and being okay with and proud of their sin. Oh, yeah. They're full holes. They're ineptitude. Yeah. yeah. That's that's definitely that's definitely how they use it. Um but yeah, even if it was just I love myself, that's still that still ain't right. Because no. you have you have to spread the love. But yeah, you're right. They do it as a form of uh accepting your sins and uh indulging in sin. Right. And wanting you to be like like uh, uh, that that leads to the excess and greed yeah. of your love. Yep, yep. And uh, also I was gonna say uh, or they'll say I'm I, what do they say I'm living my truth. Yeah, my truth. Right, as if that is slap in the face. It absolutely is, man. It, it ain't is. no my. It's one the truth. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in a sense and a, a subjective truth like my truth is is a uh is a way of like my testimony right or it's a way of like uh you know from my perspective i want to you know do this or that as a career like that can be a subjective truth sure but like you have to acknowledge that the truth is the laws of god all right, right. people out here my truth like you know like they have some kind of understanding of the universe you don't you, you, you're just imagining things, fabricating things. That's what I've been saying, my truth. And then they'll say, like, uh, being real with yourself. <clears throat> I mean, we're supposed to examine ourselves and study, but uh, not, you know, learn how to be okay with and eventually brag about yeah. know, sin, amplitude, and workers of iniquity, bro. Yeah, like the, the alphabet community, the LGBTQ I A B A A B C D whatever they uh all in they they are always about uh I had to be, be real with myself had to you know be true right. to myself there you go you know go. true to myself what that mean uh, I true love to... saying what it means right. <laughs> instead of like um uh, I like people are, I just ain't got time to do something so stupid as live a lie. <laughs> or even put on like a like that's why I've um, been telling Hannah recently like bro at, at work like I know like, like I'm not just no filter re retard but like I'm I can be brutally honest at times and make people blush yeah you understand what I'm saying yeah like not uh, what you call it not like a dummy who uh, just runs their mouth all the time and can't control what they do. All their time. Right. But like, uh, like you know, I, I, I'll check somebody quick, but it's not like to down them or nothing. It's, uh, you know, uh, they, they've been doing something probably to, like towards me in some way negatively to a point to where now, now I have to hit them with a strong form of rebuke. We'll just say, <laughs> but like, like in that case, <clears throat> or like always, bro, I just be straight up. Like uh, with my boss Paco, uh, dude. Like since I've started working, there's been people he 
He's hired new. He saved people from getting fired, like brought them to our department, put them on the forklift. Um, and like, bro, it's supposed to be as whoever gets hired is like the next in line or whatever, you know? Yeah. But like, bro, he's a, and like, I don't blame him. And the other dude that's lighter skin, light complected, and Paco, he's a, a Jew that's in his late 30s, maybe early 40s, maybe even mid to late 40s. But anyways, he uh he does any and everything to please Esau above him. But me and dude's name's Christian. But like, bro, he he talks black, like really talks talks black. Says the N word all the time, and he's ma he's marrying, having a baby with a black girl, and like. But still, it's been way too many, and Jews in Southern Kingdom let him get away with the way he acts. But, but anyway, that's another discussion for another day. But he come to me talking about, um, dude, out of the blue, Paco wrote him up for missing a Saturday two months ago, yesterday, just out the blue, blue after lunch when we was wasn't doing much. Yeah, he he must have uh, he must have got on Paco's nerves somehow, and uh, Paco wanted to take it out on him. Yeah, but like. He he uh he noticeably, uh, you know, treats me and Christian different. And but I told Christian I was like he was like bro he's like that because uh, we're white. And I was like yeah, and I don't blame him. But we're not those he should be that way towards. But he don't sit and can't have a conversation to know that. <laughs> you said you don't blame him. I blame him. <laughs> That's uh, uh -huh. of course he's been deceived. But I mean hey you don't you don't. For for me, nobody has the the past to be hateful. You know what I'm saying? Right. I I ain't gonna say hateful, but like uh, as far as like, you know, well, just bullshit. There's a there's a subconscious hate that he has, or maybe conscious hate that yeah. he has towards right. you know and his I'm, own brother. I'm not saying that it's right, it's wrong. Cause bro, even Christ tells you, don't look at appearance. Yeah. You know, if you don't know what them people are. are just like in this case. Where me and Christian are obviously Israelites, but, but and then we're the only ones that look white in our department. Yeah. So you still and, see, you still see that uh, that colorism, and even even yeah. um, even yeah, sure. in churches that, that is present, some some colorism is present, but it wasn't righteous when it was happening then either. That's why Christ had to come black. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like people like, like still, but that's always been a problem, and it will be, you know, until we finally get it right. Yeah, until we get come the kingdom together. Right, exactly. Um, but yeah, re, uh, keep reading in that in uh, chapter 12. All right, verse uh, verse 9. Verse 8. Yeah, I finished yeah, finish that. All right, verse 9. For alms doeth deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life see that right there so uh alms will purge away sin giving to people that need it will they sin. god looks at that and he'll look at your sins and say well those two cancel each other out right but we also need to hit rock 12 to go right along with that he said it's rock 12 yeah. yeah you know what i'm looking for yes um i do want to finish through verse 10 right here though uh yeah yeah yeah, we can. I'm just saying, go, given to that, uh, giving alms, and like you said today, the way that Esau has placed all value on his dollar system, yeah. that's one of the most convenient ways to give alms. Uh, we need to understand it of who to give it to. If we're just out here just giving it left and right. Right, exactly. So, um, so <coughs> give it to uh, those that need it as far as uh, the righteous people are trying to do right. And um, it says, those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. So you can't have alms without righteousness. You can't just uh, live your life of sin and then give to somebody and expect that God will not punish you for your sins. Right. But if you are somebody who is trying to overcome your sins and you help people that need it, God looks at that and says, okay, I'm more willing to forgive you because you're right. helping others. And they'd be more willing to help you overcome what you're trying to overcome yeah. uh, uh so yeah read uh reverse 10 now do what now verse 10 verse 10 
but they that sin are enemies to their own life. Right. So sin uh, is deadly. The wages of sin is death. And if you sin, you're you're sinning against your own life. Right. And you're an enemy against your own life. Yeah. So yeah, let's get that in Sirach 12, starting with verse 1. All right, the book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 1. All right. When thou wilt do good, know to who thou doest it, so shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. Right. So, so these days, uh, in late-stage capitalism, capitalism is dying uh, just because it was designed to uh, give the rich more money, to give the poor less money. And for the rich to feed off the poor, we're seeing the results of that now. And so many homeless people in every city that you go to, right? Because a lot of these people, some people are just down on their luck, but a lot of these people uh, have realized that, hey, I can make more money standing out on the curb and asking for money than I can uh, working a job. Right. And it's a lot easier for me to live in this tent than it is to try to afford an apartment. Right. Or a house. Or a house. So when look, some, a lot of people say, well, I give to the homeless, I'll, I'll, I'll do this and that, but you can't just give people that you don't know money because right. you may be giving money to a murderer or a crackhead or a thief or a rapist. You don't know. Child molester. Child molester, you don't know. When thou I will do good, know to whom thou doest it. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. All right, read verse two. Right, I was gonna say this, bro. Also, like I've noticed, especially, especially lately, and just reading that just now made it click. Bro, that's why I always, not just me, but all of us Israelites that break commandments, everybody, including those in our own household, take advantage of us. Yeah, absolutely. It's not. not Righteousness involved. Nope. That's why I'm saying you'll be thanked because you actually feel appreciated. Yes. You'll be thanked. Uh, read verse 2. Do good to the godly man, and thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the most high. Right. So if you help, uh, like what, what Gad was just talking about, people who just want to, uh, you know, leech off of you and take advantage of you, you're never going to receive a, a benefit from that. No, nah, bro. It just gets old time and time and time and time and time and time again. Yeah, they're That's just going to ask for more. They're not exactly. ever going to try to pay you back. And God's not going to give you anything because they're not godly. Right, exactly, bro. You're just, you're fuck. you're wasting your time, effort, energy, everything. You're just, like, bro, that's one. that's one thing I've been living. I'm trying to cut out, like, you know, the young guys that work after so long, you know, where it's like, I can talk to you every day, but you are showing less than no effort to change anything, you know, yeah. time to move on. Exactly. Uh, wipe off the dust of your feet and keep moving. But right. when you help a godly man, that godly man is either going to be like, okay, I got you. I'll, I'll get you back whenever I got it. Or if they can't, <clears throat> then God will pay you back as far as like, exactly. he'll, he'll give you a blessing. That you don't know where it comes from. It just comes from God. Right. Um, but also, there's a situation where, uh, say, like, maybe, Gad, you have it now, and I, I need it, and I ask, hey, could you help me out? And you give it to me. Uh, and then right. maybe, it's, maybe it's all the way down the line where the roles reverse. You see what I'm saying? Right. Where you need it, and I give it to you. So, right. you know, it just never – you, you never been just help mm -hmm. them who are godly, and you will receive a recompense, whether it be down the line, whether it be now. God got you, though. God got you. Yeah, he does. He, he gets me on a, a weekly basis. Like, brother, the last, probably the last four weeks in a row now, for at least two days, I would leave here and drive to work at FXI and Baldwin's and, bro, <clears throat> not have the gas to even get back home. And no money. Like, bro, waiting on payday. Right. Not knowing how much back home. But, like it says, you know, 
like the Esau took it and used it against us with the serving your masters. But it says, be obedient to them as you are the most high on your job. Yeah. And like, brother, like a most high, I always made sure somebody, if nothing else, somebody I, I would text and ask if they had a couple dollars on Cash App, you know. But every time I end up getting gas and any other thing I needed and pretty much wanted that day. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, there's another scripture in, uh, in Matthew 6. I believe it's on the Sermon on the Mount. But it's where Christ says, don't worry about what you need because right. God will provide it for you. Exactly. Don't be worried about the things that the Gentiles are, are concerned with. Be careful. Right, exactly. Exactly. Um, right. Yeah, keep reading on that. All right. <clears throat> there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, not to him him that giveth no alms nor to him, that giveth. to him that giveth no alms there can be no good can come from somebody who is a sinner who is uh not, not trying to repent and there can be no good come from somebody who doesn't help others all right still there again yeah i had to get a drink oh okay um keep reading all right Let's see. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. Exactly. Give to the godly man and don't help sinners. All right. The way you help a sinner is by giving them the gospel. That's the way that you help a sinner. Um, okay. Hold this because we'll come back to it. But give me um, Matthew 11. All right, let's see. The book of Matthew, in chapter 11. Uh, start with verse 4. <clears throat> verse 2. 4. All right, verse 4. <clears throat> All right, you said start at what, bro? You went out besides 4? Yes. Start at verse 4, Matthew 11 and verse 4. All right, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shew John again those things which ye do hear and see. Keep going. The blind, the blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Right, so when Christ was on the earth, and this kind of circles back to, um, like, cleansing us, of our illnesses and things like that christ came and he was a healer he healed the blind he right. healed those with uh with lame legs with broke legs or whatever the lepers, the lepers yeah the paralyzed the lepers those who were sick with those forms of diseases that spread uh the the deaf could hear right so uh you know it kind of sounds like i'm deaf in this area right here so it would be great if the lord could hear me on that um it said that the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them, all right? So Christ didn't just walk around giving the poor people money. That's not no. going to heal them. No. What's going to heal them is the word of God, and the word of God will allow them to get their life in order, and with that, God will bless them, all right? Um, but yeah, there was, there was situations where if they came to Christ and they were uh, listening to his teachings, it was after three or four days before he gave the people the, the bread and the fishes. With right, the exactly. Where they fed the thousands with, with, you know, just a little bit of bread and fish. That's All what right? people uh, think about. They was camped out there for nearly a week, wasn't it? Yeah, for days. For like three days, I think it was. Yeah. So they were, and they he didn't want to send them home hungry, so right. he fed them. Exactly. But um, the point is, those were people who were following Christ adamantly. He helped those people. When it right. comes to those, you know, necessary things like food and, uh, you know, even shelter. You had some people who uh, stayed at Christ's house at one point. But um, let's go back to Sirach 12. <coughs> so, uh, pick back over verse 5. All right. Book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 5. Do well to him that is lowly, but give not 
to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread and give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. Right, so giving, uh, it said, don't give, uh, for example, a homeless person that you don't know, don't just give them food because maybe that gives him the strength that he's going to use to uh, steal your car. Or maybe that gives him the strength that he's going to use to go rape a woman later. You don't know. If you don't know him, then you don't know. All right. So, so give not to the ungodly. Uh, finish that verse out. Hang on. Bro, it's bad messed up. Like, it's got a bad echo. It's like, it's talking when you're not even talking. Well, yeah, your video is just behind. But yeah, pick up right there from the call where you left off. All right, for else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. Right, so, so the same way where God looks upon you giving to the godly and he will expunge your sins, it's the same way that if you give to the ungodly, God's going to see that and he's going to bring more curses upon you. All right, keep reading. All right, for the most high hated sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keep it them against the mighty day of their punishment. All right, so God hates sinners. God will not respect you for helping people that he hates. That's not how that works. God wants to help the people he loves, all right? Not only his chosen people, but those who are righteous, all right? Those who are trying to keep the commandments, those who are rehearsing the righteous acts. That's who God wants you to help. If you help the sinners who he hates, he will bring upon you the same judgment. All right. Read verse 7. All right. Give unto the good and help not the sinner. Right. So give to the good and help not the sinner. All right. You got anything you want to add to that? No. Oh. All right. No, All right. I covered it on that topic, down that little tangent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else that you want to talk about or bring out? Because I ain't even uh, asked you that when you come on. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask you about the... about what now? The what, what, bro? You said you're gonna ask me about something. Like your uh, uh it, it keeps freezing and then it, you'll go blah, 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 real fast i was trying to figure out what you said last no yeah, no i said it's the thing that you want to bring out oh uh yeah i was going to ask you about the uh the script on what is righteousness in psalms psalm 119 172 all right Don't get that. Read it. Yeah, I will. Hang on one second. I'm writing it down. One. You said one nineteen, one seventy two. Yep. All right. Yeah. Righteousness. Alright, okay. Psalm 119, one thing Alright, here we go. Alright, my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Right, so all the commandments of God are righteousness. And prayer goes good with fasting and alms and righteousness. All four of those are the commandments of God. Of course, righteousness involves all of that, but praying unto the Lord and fasting along with that and helping those who need it. Again, that's in the law as well, but it all goes together. It all goes hand in hand. There's no specific commandment that says, you know, you have to give to such and such this amount because of blank. You know what I mean? But situations like that arise where you know it's the right thing to do to help, you know, the righteous out, to help the godly out. But um, if you don't have anything 
other, any other topics you, that you want to touch on, we can go ahead and, and close it out with this scripture in Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. Um, that's, that's the one I was looking for earlier before you came on. I was not able to find uh, Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. It, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about initially. Right. Okay. Okay, you say Wisdom of Solomon what now? 11 and 12? No, 16 and 12. 16 and 12. Well, okay. All right. Let's see. Sixteen, twelve. All right. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter sixteen, and verse twelve. All right. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word. O Lord, which healeth all things. Right, so we did read in Sirach 38 about how God made these things, how God made doctors to heal the people. But the order that it comes is you're supposed to, you know, remove yourself from your sin, uh, pray unto the Lord, and then go to the doctor to receive medicine. So right. understand, even if you use the herb or the mollifying plaster, the mollifying plaster would be like a cast for a broken bone. Right. Exactly. Um, that's not what what's really going to restore you to health. God and his word is what heals all things. Right. So, you know, you have some people who die from the diseases that they take. You know, you have some people die in horrific accidents that break their bones, but the, right. the word of the Lord is what determines uh, whether you're going to heal from it or whether you're going to die from it. Exactly. Because you got, bro, like we're the temple, so that are you going to upkeep it or no that's right that's right in verse uh 13. all right for thou hast power of life and death thou leadest to the gates of hell and bringest up again and see that's that's what we were just talking about how god has the keys of life and death all right uh and you know you have some people who die but then they come back to life that's what it says right here thou leadest to the gates of hell and bring us up again and that's what we see when when people like die in a car crash, but then get taken to the hospital, they bring them back again. That's God leading them to the gates of hell and bringing them back. Right. 